<laughs> Hi guys and welcome to a very special episode. This is actually the first ever uh, collab beer I'm doing with another beer tuber other than Peter. Uh, I'm today joined by Rob from uh, Hop Scene. Mac uh, Hop Scene. That's correct. Yeah, Hopscene.com on um, on the World Wide Web and on YouTube, YouTube forward slash Hopscene. Cool. But uh, yeah, today we're going to review Total Rate Beer. It's a uh, Pilsner hop with Simcoe, Cetra, and Sauvignon and Centennial. It's on uh, five point, oh, what is it, two percent ABV, and um, it's from a Danish brewer or brewing duo who does a contract brewing thing. To will, uh, to be as in tour. Um, it's a hopped up Pilsner with a, um, a touch of rebellion. Uh, <laughs> burning hot uh, barricade, barricade, and a little hope of a beautiful future. So it's uh, <laughs> that's what it says on the backside. But uh, I've heard something that this is a uh, beer dedicated for the rate beer community. So um, <laughs> that's a little fun thing. But uh, yeah, and it also well, says on the back: sometimes when you're drunk, you can see better. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. There's there's a triangle and a turned over question mark on the yeah. on the backside here. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll get this one cracked and. But uh, yeah, pouring the uh, rate beer here, rate rate beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a footed pilsner glass. I'm not. Um, yeah, yeah. I went for I went for a sniff just because it mentions all those hops, and I thought I want something that's gonna yeah. kind of funnel all those um, aromas. Yeah, but uh, the looks of it, almost a pale ale, pale, golden colored beer. Uh, yeah, really fizzy. Uh, see, mine's not excessively. I guess it's because you you're using the more fluted shape glass, you get yeah. more carbonation out of it. And probably. But a, a one finger, off white, orangey head, orange tinted head. Very foamy. <laughs> Shall we check out the aroma? Yeah, let's do that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely get a lot of uh, Nelson Sauvin. Yeah, that kind of white, grapey, peachy, tropical fruitiness. Absolutely. Wow. So it's a bit kind of a bit dirty, and I think that's coming from the Simcoe. With Simcoe, I always get like a, a raspberry coolie or kind of synthetic strawberry. Oh yeah, but because I've never, I don't know what cat piss smells like. So when everybody <laughs> says Simcoe smells of cat piss, well, <laughs> I don't I've, know heard, what like. I've heard that as well, and I've never. I, I like Simcoe. I have. I haven't got that ever, but. This smells so refreshing and so not pilsner like. There's a kind of musty um, note to it. I think I might think come from the pilsner lager. See, I think I often get a, a mustiness from Simcoe. Oh yeah, like a very very resinous pine. But there's a lot of uh, yeah grapefruit, tropical mm. fruits in general. It's just you can really smell that this is hot. Yeah. It smells incredible. Yeah, it does. It's one of those beers you could just smell all day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and some and some citrus actually as well. Oh yeah. But very a tad, uh, not much. Yeah, maybe a bit of slightly older smelling grapefruit and like maybe blood orange. It's got a more of a rounded quality than a like a cutting kind of fresh um, orange or lemon. Oh yeah, but this yeah. is this smells. Great. Are you ready to dig in? Let's dig in. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> wow. This is tasty. This is extremely mm. tasty. You can definitely taste it's a Pilsner. Yeah. I think that's the thing that's throwing me slight, slightly. Mm. But um, yeah, mouthfeel medium mm. with a dry finish 
it's not bitter as such. It's not really bitter. It's more bitter than a normal pilsner, but mm. I think there is quite a bit of bitterness at the back end. Um, it is slightly, slightly perfumed. It's if you if somebody sprays a, like an aerosol in a room and you walk into it, and you oh. kind of catch it at the back of your throat. Oh yeah. But it starts off like a pilsner that it is very it's very thirst quenching and quite neutral to begin with I think. But yeah, it's got a little bit bit more presence because it is has got a bit quite a bit of body considering. Mm. But then it it kind of fades over or turns over to this hot bomb almost. Absolutely. IPA pale ale mm. kind of. So it's a it's almost two faced. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that once again a bit of a, um, a not to us red beer? People being two faced. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a load of grapefruit. Once again, I, I think it's what you get on the on the nose. It's quite a rounded flavour. Um, maybe a bit of papaya, but not something as juicy as like a fresh orange or that. Something like that. It's a, it's a bit more kind of there's an earthiness and a slight spiciness to it. Yeah, I think that comes uh, that might come from the lago yeast if I uh, <clears throat> if I should pinpoint that. But then again, it still have that mouthfeel that kind of it it's it's perfect with the amount of hops because it kind of you have that sweet caramelly kind of uh, taste that mellows uh, the whole thing out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But um, I don't know what to say else about this one. Um, there's nothing awfully bad about this, or, or there's nothing bad about this beer. There's no. nothing wrong with it as such. It's a, as you said, it's a little. It throws one out of balance at first because you get that pilsner and then all the hops that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Uh, because normally when I think pilsner, I think a, a. You get a little hop presence at first, and then, or that pilsner-like quality, and then a little hop bitterness at the very end to kind of freshen yeah. things up. But yeah. this just wrecks everything. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really nicely done, and you can see that link uh, that they've got such a close relationship with with Mikula, That uh, if you look at some of these beers, like uh, American Dream, which is, is supposedly a pilsner as well, but is is massively overhopped as well, so I, I don't know if it's it's passing on of those sensibilities that a a lager just doesn't need to be a traditional lager; it can be anything you want it to be. Yeah, and um, don't get me wrong; I don't say this is bad. It's great. I I love this one. <laughs> yeah. I know what to drink again. <laughs> I need <laughs> to drink this again. It's one of those beers for me because it kind of bridges those two styles. That this is one of those instances where style doesn't really matter because it's not trying to be f faithful to a specific beer style. So for me, it, it's raid beer. It does. It's not a pilsner. It's not a pale ale. It's just a beer oh. made with these ingredients, and it tastes absolutely lovely. Mm. So uh, rating wise, this is a great, great beer. It's a fantastic thirst quenzer, right? Mm. Uh, extremely tasty and that kind of uh, blend of very hoppy lager pilsner type r plays re really well with this one um, you get that as you said pilsner taste at the f at the first at first and then it kind of turns over to this um yeah hop presence instead of that little hop tinge you get from pilsners you get this whole american take <laughs> on it <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I really like Nelson Sofing. It's one of my favorite hops. And Me too. You can definitely taste it in this one. Mm. Yeah, it's a lovely combination of hops. I mean, and quite a bold variety as well. I mean, I think Centennial, it's a bit of a, uh, it can work with a lot of stuff, but Simcoe and Nelson Sofing are very kind of big hops. I think they're really well balanced in this beer. Yeah, but um, rating wise, I think I'm going to go go with 87. This is a great beer. And I know a lot of other of Two Wheels beer, they Two Wheels beer, they make great stuff. Go and check it out and try them because I can highly recommend them. 
quality is high and great great beer but how about you then I completely agree you know I mean every time some uh, Mikula beer seems to come into the UK some total uh, beers come along with it and I'm, I'm more excited to see what which total beers are going to be available as soon as this kind of appeared I was getting my credit card out and buying it straight <laughs> away as far as the rain goes I'd say I'm going to just go in 90 I think it's right up there I think there's it's that preconceived idea that a Pilsner shouldn't be great but this isn't a Pilsner it's a it's a specific beer in its own right it's just it's a it just happens to be made with Pilsner malt and I don't know is it you does it use um, um, is it is it lager is it, does it use a lager yeast do you yeah know? Uh, to, oh, lab- really? to label it a Pilsner you need to la- uh, to use lager yeast oh, so I really? think I think they used Pilsner mal- uh, Pilsner yeast or yeah. lager yeast <laughs> it's just got such a, it's a there's a lovely flavour I think it's really well handled it's got a load of hot flavour which for me I prefer hot flavour and aroma over big punishing bitterness it's got a nice level of bitterness but it's, those hot flavours are absolutely jumping around and I love it so yeah I'm going with a 90 nice but um, yeah thank you very much for joining me Rob and uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, please comment subscribe rate and all that stuff and check Rob out if you haven't Rob's hopscene.com if you haven't checked it out he makes some great stuff <laughs> and um, yeah and all around great guy but a great guy I'll see you guys around and hopefully we'll do another one Rob yeah certainly cheers cheers <laughs>